McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 10. Finally reach episode 10 of this Journeyman franchise mode. Now we are with the Vancouver Canucks after leaving the Winnipeg Jets last season. This season we are looking to, you know, potentially win the cup first year. Uh, we've put together a very solid team. If you missed the last episode, go back and check it out. There should be a little card somewhere around here that uh, links you to the entire playlist. You can go back and watch all the videos of Journeyman. But as of right now, this team is shaping up very well. We've got good chemistry throughout the entire team. We brought in the additions of Matthew Kachuk on the front end as well as Rasmus Ristolainen on the back end. So a really solid core here. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've got some young prospects there in Reed Sabrin and Harrison Canone, as well as some other really good guys like Yanni uh, Nokalainen and even guys like, you know, Niles Hoglander and uh, Elias Pettersson. Like, we've got a really good group here in net, Thatcher Demko and um, what's his name? Michael. Yeah, Michael DiPietro. So this Canucks team's looking to win right now. Um, obviously, the Canucks signed Goudreau a couple seasons back. He's been in Vancouver for just over a year now. And, um, I mean, Bo Horvat's coming off of one of his best seasons ever, if not the, his best. Yeah, his second best season ever. He scored 92 points two years ago, so that's pretty crazy. But, um, yeah, we're looking to put together a monster campaign here with the Canucks. Uh, I still need to get some scouting done, but besides that, once that's done, then I'm going to jump into a full season sim, and uh, yeah, I will, I mean, I'll end up seeing you guys at the end of the season, but I also want to show you the draft class. There's a potential franchise winger, I don't know if he actually is or not here, Ahmed Paco, uh, looks pretty darn solid, six foot tall winger, probably going to be a playmaker, if my judgment's correct, might be a two-way forward, but besides that, there's a lot of defense in here. Uh, two right-handed defensemen in Dwayne Jaffrey as well as Gordy Slater. And then Nicholas Seal uh, is a left-handed offensive defenseman. Besides that, I mean, haven't gotten a lot of scouting done yet. But, you know, that's what I'm going to spend a couple minutes doing here. And then we'll jump into a full season sim. So for those of you guys who don't know how to, like, scout properly, I mean, if you're playing, like, a full-on, like, franchise mode like owner mode you have to go to your operations budget first and actually make sure that you have uh, your scout salaries bumped all the way up properly because if they're not maxed out then you can't afford to sign new scouts then you go over to your uh, your team management here you go to your coaching staff and uh, you actually go over to scouts instead and then you can see which scouts you have how many years left they have you what you're going to mainly look for is amateur scouts. Pro scouts are not as big a deal unless you're just constantly trading for players. So, I mean, I'm going to look and see. By the looks of it, we have two NHL Atlantic coaches there, which makes no sense. Like, why would you have two of the exact same scout? And we also have two NHL Pacific. Actually, do we have three NHL Atlantic? Oh, my gosh. Why? Why do we need that many? Like, right? It doesn't make sense. So, you can hit Y on your controller, change the region. Um... I mean, we can keep scouts in here. By the looks of it, we got two amateur scouts already in the States. Um, and both of them, for whatever reason, <sighs> both of them, for whatever reason, are scouting the USA East. Doesn't make sense, but it happens. Um, so we're going to look through amateurs, find this other USA. Look at that, three WHL scouts. Why? Why do we need that many scouts? USA East, USA East. Yeah, no, that it, there shouldn't be that many scouts in one region. You only need one scout per region, more or less. So, um, yeah, we're going to move over to the central because we didn't have a scout there. So once you get all your scouts kind of realigned and, you know, in the right regions, then it's really easy to just go over. You hit A on the scout, bump it over to scout specific players, and then this way you can see all your prospect list. Once you click A on the player, you can shift it over to potential in comparison for what type of scouting range they're doing. And then you can just spam A, go down. You have to double click A to select the player. 
and I mean the USA East doesn't seem to have a lot so then you can see at the bottom of the screen it says confirm assignment once you click confirm assignment then all those players as you can see on the uh, left of your screen I, or I guess it's the right as you can see on the right of your screen are um, all getting scouted for a potential comparison you can go down and okay no don't want to hire a new scout I hit the wrong button but um, then you can go down and do that for all of your regions and you know get a whole bunch of guys scouted here and as you can see I've already done that with a bunch of guys here but you know it, it helps to go through and just get all this done Another thing with scouting guys is if you don't know by now, potential comparison is like the meat and potatoes of scouting. Once you do that, all the other things kind of just show up on their own. You don't have to do much. And uh, it makes scouting much easier for sure. Something else that becomes very useful is once you finish looking through a scouting report, you can see at the top of the screen it says estimated date for how long it's going to take for scouting the specific players. And this lets you know kind of when to stop throughout the calendar to, you know, reassign scouts, do that kind of thing. And it makes for a much easier scouting experience doing all your scouting through this menu rather than a different one. So by the looks of it, we got no active scouts in Europe. Um, and, you know, you want to go for kind of like the highest numbers of players. So we're going to go to the EBL because there's actually a decent amount of forwards and defense in there. Then you can, you know, just go back, do all your normal stuff, and this makes for much easier scouting in the long run. Okay, guys, so just to, you know, kind of wrap up quickly here before we hit the full season sim, I wanted to show you guys how strong and overpowered this team is. <laughs> oh, baby, this is going to be a fun season for sure. Like, there's some good, good players in this Vancouver lineup. Like, don't get me wrong. Look at that 94 offense, 94 defense and then 86 goaltending to back it up. The Canucks should be a competitive team. If they miss the playoffs yet again, I'm just going to laugh, but that's going to be it. I will see you guys at the end of the regular season for the 2023-24 regular season. All right, guys, so to end off the 2023-24 season, the Canucks honestly slide a bit. They were... Uh, chasing the Anaheim Ducks the entire way and uh, ended up losing a bunch of games here at the end of the season and yeah like you can see this this six game losing streak kind of did us in there and we just about missed the playoffs we didn't but holy crap the Canucks just about like that was that was not okay <laughs> so um as you can see there, these are all the teams that have made the playoffs. Uh, Coyotes make it again. The Ducks, I don't know how the Ducks did so well. They signed Patrick Laine, but still. Um, and then besides that, the Senators and Panthers also made it in. Uh, unfortunately, the Blue Jackets didn't. Um, and then who else? The Wild made it in. And unfortunately, the Predators did not. So... Yeah, we got some teams in here that have, you know, decent chances, but by the looks of it, we are going to be going up against the uh, Vancouver, or not the Vancouver Canucks, the Anaheim Ducks. And yeah, 91 rated Patrick Line is, you know, going to prove to be a problem, I guess. Um, besides that, like, I don't have a lot in this team. They got an 89 rated John Gibson in his prime. But that's about it like I don't know how this team won that many games the team that was actually formidable was the Tampa Bay Lightning President's Trophy winning Tampa Bay Lightning uh Braden points up to a 93 stamp coast as well as Kucherov like they've got some good players man like even though yeah we did manage to get Sergeyev away from them they're still they're still one of the best teams actually they are technically the best team in the NHL still looking over at the player stats now um, as you can see, Elias Pettersson did not quite average a point a game. He was close, but didn't quite. He led our team in scoring, though, in the full 82 games. Bo Horvat was, well, kind of behind him, five points behind. And then overall for the entire league, obviously Stamkos Kucherov led the league. McDavid was right there. Uh, Barzell was there. Barkov point. Yamamoto. And then something I found very interesting looking through here quickly was uh, the fact that Lafreniere has now hit a franchise potential 
in Edmonton. So that means two more franchise players in Edmonton instead of one. Because uh, Drysaddle, this is from an older update. So yeah, Drysaddle was not a franchise yet, thank God. But um, the Oilers somehow missed the playoffs still. Doesn't matter because we took their playoff spot as the Canucks. And then uh, I guess we could also go look at rookie skaters because that's something else that's usually pretty intriguing. Uh, the goaltenders can also be very interesting to see how everyone performed. How many more teams are there? Okay. Um, so, yeah, as far as goalies go, uh, yeah, Vasilevsky was the best goalie in the league. Carter Hart had himself a year, though, too. That was that's insane. Uh, a lot of high-rated goalies in here, and then all of a sudden, you know, Lundqvist is winning 42 games. Um, as far as Demko went, doesn't look good, man. Looks like there's a lot of other guys ahead of him. Yeah, he only won 34 games. So for $8 million, man, he was not worth it this year. As far as the uh, defense goes for your goal scoring and points, by the looks of it, Provorov's going to win himself the uh, Norris this year. Costa Spear was right there too. Honestly, there were a couple guys right on that tail. Of uh, yeah, geez, that's that's close. And then rookie skaters, no idea who this guy is. Garrett P is his name Pylon or is it Pylon? I, I Pylon. I'm gonna call him Pylon just you know for comedy's sake. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, not a lot of like top prospects in here this year by the looks of it. Boston had some good prospects in there for sure, but. There's guys like Quentin Byfield who somehow, like, what? How? He's 21 years old and this is rookie season? Like, what are you doing to him? Yeah, like, that was, uh, that was a little sad, to be honest, for the uh, rookie skaters. But, I mean, you could say the same thing about our Vancouver team because we were supposed to be one of the best in the league. And, well, we did make the playoffs. So, you know, guys, when we look through our team, You'd think, oh yeah, this is going to be one of those teams that, you know, should. They got the depth to just beat about any any team. Not just in a playoff series, but in regular season too. No, no, instead we are just like, yeah. Ugh. This team, this frustrates me uh, because this team should do better. But apparently Harrison Canone just jumped right up on rating. All the way up to an 87 rating at 19 years old. Um... I mean, he must have, like, thrown a bunch of hits or something, like, I mean, his ice time progressed, which is why he progressed, yeah, um, that's a lot of hits, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't, I don't understand why this team couldn't do more, they should have done more, but, you know, we'll, figure it out here pretty quick or we won't in the playoffs especially but my guess is that we're going up against the uh the anaheim ducks and anaheim had a absurd record so yeah oh no we're going up against chicago okay well, as you can see we're pretty bad going into the playoffs but why aren't we up against that i guess it's top wild card there kind of thing like Okay, um, Chicago might be a better team here. Yikes. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, they're a good team as well. But I don't know, man. I don't know if they're better than uh, Anaheim. They're good. Don't get me wrong. They're a good team, but I think Anaheim might be a better team. Oh, yeah, Anaheim's a way better team. But this Chicago team, guys, this Chicago team had 50 wins on the season. Oh, like, come on, Sim Engine. You got to be a little bit better than that. <laughs> like, we got apparently a championship caliber team on our hands right here, but uh, no, no, we just got to lose all those regular season games, go 4 5 and 1 heading into the playoffs. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm expecting a lot from guys like Yanni Nolika or Nokalainen and, you know, Horvat Goudreau. Like, these top two lines need to produce. There's no way they can't because, really, they should be some of the best, you know, team or some of the best players in the league, and it's not happening really. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, next episode we are going to be jumping into the playoffs against the Chicago Blackhawks, looking to you know send the Canucks into a deeper playoff run here if possible. There are 
two other teams besides Vancouver in the Western Conference that have not won a cup yet, as in the Minnesota Wild and the Arizona Coyotes. In the Eastern Conference, it only looks like, of course, Florida and Ottawa get matched up against each other. Yeah, okay, well that helps with our goals here of, you know, getting teams to go anywhere that haven't won the cup before. Yeah, like, I mean, Ottawa somehow is becoming a fairly good team. Um, I mean, yeah, I <laughs> don't ask me how, but they are. Carson Lambos is actually working wonders for the Minnesota Wild right now. Besides that, honestly, they should play Cole Perfetti up the lineup because I think he would make a big impact. And then their goaltending, well, they actually drafted some pretty good goalies, but they haven't really made any changes there yet. This team is looking crazy. Anthony Buss is actually going to be a monster once he uh, comes into his own for the Florida Panthers. Oh boy, that is... Uh, maybe we made a mistake here because Florida might might just go on a playoff run if they do things right. Uh, and then the other team, I guess, was, oh, well, I mean, Vancouver. Yes, you've seen our lineup like 10 times this episode now, but no, um, Arizona. Arizona is a really good team as well. They are in the playoffs, and uh, they're looking to win because I don't think they've gotten very far in the past. So Arizona Coyotes, yeah, they need a center more than anything, really, but they still got a good team, man. They got... Vessel line is insane. They got Soderstrom in there, who's you know a bit of a beast of a pick, to be honest. And then, well, their goaltending is actually lacking. So yeah, I don't know, man. I think the Canucks stand a really good chance here heading into the playoffs. There are some other good teams, but I don't know if any teams have the depth that Vancouver does. So yeah, we'll see how this all kind of pans out and plays uh, next episode when we take on the Chicago Blackhawks. You know, I want to try Pedersen top line because he was our leading scorer. And, you know, I just get the feeling him and Nola Kynan and Goudreau could put some magic together. So we're going to try that next episode. But that's going to be it for me. If you guys are new to the channel, go down below, consider subscribing, leave a like on the video if you made it to the end, man. Like, come on, that's the least you can do. Also, go check out my channel, check the other playlists, because there's, you know, there's this Journeyman series, which is going pretty well so far, but there's also an Oilers franchise, there's also the Hamilton Tigers franchise, there's lots of different content to watch on there, so go check it out, and also consider turning on notifications if you do subscribe, so you never miss a video. But that is going to be it for me, I hope you guys enjoyed, this is Etanios signing out, and see ya!